I'm so looking forward to this conversation today. Chris and I have been hosting several friends over the last couple of days with small kids, and it's forced us to dive right back <laughs> into the books that our children used to love and uh, sent me packing to the Bruderhof Library here um, to dig out especially fairy tales. But we're hoping to share some of our favorite stories. We're going to try to limit ourselves. There's so yeah. many great ones. The best read allows with great messages. Yeah, so um, <laughs> this is just basically a gratuitous walk down memory lane for the two of us. Our house is not very little people friendly at the moment. So thank you for doing the library run. Oh, so um, fun. I didn't know where but, to but stop. It, yeah, but it just it brings back so many memories when we started yeah. reading. So, yeah. Also, this is not really a pitch for why we should read to our children. I think parents know that. We all, we all know that reading to our kids is massively yeah. important for yeah. their learning. Beyond that, it's a beautiful thing to do together as a family. And it's part of that that ritual, yeah, so bedtime am, ritual. I guess I am making ritual. a little pitch because yeah, we can't well, help it. well, for us, yeah. so there's what seven years of age range between our youngest and our oldest mm -hmm. of our three sons, um, but we managed pretty much every night when the boys were growing up, particularly mm -hmm. when they were little, to um, rally around on the couch, get a little bit cozy, and read mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, as as the kids grew up, then it was a matter of trying to find stuff that would captivate everybody. But fairy tales are really, really good for that. And sometimes, and was, sorry, sometimes yeah. we had two different um, books, books going yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And what was really fun when the oldest had outgrown books, it was just about time for the youngest to start, and I got to read them yeah. all over again. Because as a teacher, well, we both love reading aloud. Yeah. So, so friends, if you don't have little people in your life, if you're not parenting little people, or you're not a grandparent, or auntie and uncle, lucky enough to. Um, had little ones come around. Hey, Jules. Um, this, this may not be your favorite video, but we're going to do this anyway, and you're going to start. Okay, so Harvey's Hideout, and it's by the Lillian, by Lillian and Russell Hoban. Mm. Um, they're just such a great team. You may know Bread and Jam uh, for Francis, but Plow Publishing brought this one out of the woodwork in 2018. And like all of Russell and Lillian's books, they really explore um, themes of like little petty arguments. Responsibility. Responsibility, um, working through issues in a positive way. Family dynamics. Yeah, family dynamics, independence. Respect for father and mother. Yes, they're just great. And always include an adventure narrative. So Harvey's Hideout, get it from Plow Publishing if you don't have it in your library or anything by Russell and Lillian Hoban. As a Plow author, do you have a conflict of interest pitching that book? I mostly... Well. No, it's all good. <laughs> You're so mean. My turn? Yeah, look at Jewel. She wants to read. This is an amazingly, beautifully illustrated uh, retelling or um, condensement, condensement? Abbreviated uh, version yeah, of Hiawatha, yeah. the yeah. classic Longfellow poem. The illustrations are by Susan Jeffers and our kids poured over them by the hour, but the language mm -hmm. and the music of it, mm -hmm. by the shores of Gitchigumi, by the shining big sea waters, stood the wigwam of Nokomis. Yeah. Yeah. And daughter the, of the moon. Daughter of the moon. Nokomis. Um, and, you know, Mudway Ushka. Yeah. Things like that. <laughs> our middle son, who just, Mudway Ushka. Yeah. Well, and they worked all these, all yeah. these names and places worked themselves into our, in our Absolutely. family language. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Became, you know, Hiawatha's chickens became birds in our vocab. And, and anyway, you cannot go wrong introducing the classics to kids at a young age. So Hiawatha in childhood then yeah. led to, ta-da, Hiawatha in full, read at the breakfast table, I believe, yes, when the yes. boys were older. Some dear friend of ours in the U.S. sent us an 1873 yep. edition of Longfellow's poetry. All of it. Yeah. yeah. And so we read The Courtship of Miles, Miles Standish. <laughs> um, yeah. We read The Song of Hiawatha in full. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I realized what a beautiful allegory for Christ is contained within the poem. Um, anyway. It's an anti-slavery poem. Yeah. Brilliant really stuff. So Hiawatha. Excellent. Okay. My next one is an Australian uh -huh. one, Diary of a Wombat. And there's a bunch of other ones um, but uh, that Jackie French did after this. But it's just very joyful, simple um, for your... I want yeah. to see the pictures. Yeah, you, you keep talking. <laughs> it just tells the story of wombat of, of a wombat that befriends a family. And wombats are friendly. They cause big problems for the farmers, but not in this book. Um, they just cause a rumpus and they become kind of a family pet. So if you want to introduce your kids to Australia a little bit, this is a good one. Um, and wombats do exist. They're kind of like a fat, furry groundhog. They very much exist. <laughs> um, 
and the way she illustrates them makes them look very cute and cuddly. Sadly, in real life, um, many farmers find them um, classically annoying because they do, they do yeah. a tremendous amount of damage. Yeah. But nonetheless, they, they belong in this landscape and they are iconic yeah. to Australia. So I think the repetitive nature of that book yeah. makes it just perfect for for younger kids. It's a bit like what you know, the very hungry caterpillar. It keeps yes. building on, yeah. on the thing that went before. Yeah. So yeah. brilliant choice. Okay, for my next uh, selection, I've got Richard Scarry's great big mystery book and. <laughs> Raising sons, uh, raising boys particularly. I don't know why I'm saying boys because like girls would love this just as much. Yeah. But our boys are really captivated yeah. um, by all things Richard Scarry, particularly his you know his machinery and, and his everything's crashing the whole time. But this yeah. one's yeah. this one's detective stories. Sam and Dudley, the yeah. cat and the pig. Yeah. Um, and I even have I have a recording. I'm gonna flip through some pictures, yeah. um, and we'll go to voiceover of our son, our oldest, when he was I think five or six, and had the mm-hmm. whole thing memorized. He couldn't actually read. But he read it many yeah, times. Yep. So, yeah, brilliant. And I think that's the whole point. We said we weren't going to pitch the reading thing, but we are. Um, kids getting getting the lyricism of language and the rhythm of language into their hearts and minds is just such an important part of childhood. I then Dudley asked Warthog and Baboon. They were sitting on his hat. No, we are sitting on our own hat, they said. Then Dudley went to another table. Pardon me, is one of you gentlemen sitting? Horse, wolf, and croaky croc leaped out of the chair. Croaky with red torn trousers. I mean, who wouldn't want to live in a world where detectives can ask people if they're sitting on the detective's hat and the response is, no, we're sitting on our own hat. You know, exactly. Kids get that and our family got many a chuckle out of that line over and over again. As we read that, so yeah. anything by Richard Scarry is amazing, um, and this book is certainly a time-honored classic. I'm going to wrap up with Hilda Boswell's Treasury of Children's Stories, and the little kids at our house this week are obsessed with fairy tales. Hooray! And I said I have to read you Pinkle and the Witch, and the reason I love this um, particular. Um, treasury is that it has some rare fairy tales that you can't find elsewhere like Pinkle and the Witch. And I love Pinkle because it's that classic three boy, three brother story, which mm. we had three sons, so it was kind of cool. But rather than the little, the, the youngest son just gets everything great um, because he's the youngest, in Pinkle and the Witch he gets things um, or things go well for him because he's clever, he's kind, there's a lot of ingenuity and um aren't thou not a knave isn't yes it? yeah that one so he uses his brains and he uses um sleight of hand sleight of hand to get what what yeah. he you know to get the princess so you're uh, you're okay. you were a braver child than i because this yeah. book you had we had this and, and our house in england on those dark nights and the wind whistling in the chimneys and coming through the the cracks there, there are stories in here that gave me the cold shivers. I just avoided that one. Yeah. That, which one? But I remember, one? Um, yeah. I remember really enjoying the extract that's in here from um, from Dickens. Um, come on. Uh, David Copperfield. David Copperfield, yeah. The, yeah. the Road to London, mm-hmm. um, and Oscar Wilde's Selfish Giants in here. Yes, which is very. And a it's beautiful a retelling of the Water Babies, and yeah. there's that line in there: "Those that wish to be clean, clean they will be." And yeah almost mystical and as a kid I would sit there and and ponder those things so I don't know a child that can't read that book over and over and over again or have it read to them not sure if it's still in print but there are Hilda Boswell collections or omnibuses out there you can certainly find these books so I would encourage you to do that and um, can we make a list of other books that we're not getting to in this conversation because there were so many we didn't know where to stop yeah and I think (laughs) you know with the boys sort of past the point where children's stories are the go-to thing in the evening, uh, we might have to start just reading to Jules. I know. <laughs> she right, seemed very interested today. Hey, Donald. Okay, so we're going to leave it there. That's yeah. that's really all we have for today. Um, but it, it, just an encouragement to, to read, obviously, yeah. at all stages of life and encourage kids and young people in your in your family and your spheres to to get into books, um, recommend good books to each other. Drop us your favorites yeah. um, in, your, in the comments. Yeah. Let's have some fun with this. It would be great to, uh, to hear what, mm-hmm. what books inspired you when you were young and uh, also what books you're enjoying now reading to your mm-hmm. children or grandchildren. So um, until next time, we'll, uh, we'll call it a wrap. Have a great rest of your day. Talk soon. Bye. Bye-bye.